talked about actors being replaced, we talked about YouTubers being replaced. What about news reporters, news anchors? Because this, this next clip I'm going to show you really kind of made me question the future of that sector. AI generated newsreader is live in Kuwait. So this blonde haired computer generated woman named uh, Feda appeared on Kuwait News. Uh, you know, could this cutting edge tech replace the need for human news anchors? So this person does not exist. This is a, a generated model which you can put in some kind of GPT, uh, you know, instruction and it will give you the news and it will have her reading it out. And this is going to potentially replace news anchors obviously a lot cheaper a lot easier so in this situation like an actual news reporter mm. is just like an AI model basically and we can see that model being like the perfect version for everybody it's different based on their feed it's like, it looks like the most engaging the, the most you know addictive type of person whatever that individual is into right um, which could go into different angles and sectors as well that I'm, I'm sure we could think about. But just in terms of like news reporters, do you think that's going to be a job in a couple of years? Because the he it's such an easy thing in theory to replace. The, the chat GPT instantly gets the headlines from Google News. Yeah. It instantly, you know, creates the avatar that's speaking it. The images come up on the screen, you know, using yeah, yeah. DALI or whatever. Surely that will be like one of the first ones to go. But what, what, what do you think? If that is one of the first ones to go, I think everyone will stop watching the news. Yeah, because it'll be like less interesting to watch because you know it's not somebody's opinion, you know, it's just an algorithm. Exactly. And also, it starts making you question, like, like, for example, I already don't watch the news. Maybe I'm going to get, I'm going to get <laughs> a lot of shit for that. Yeah. B but quite simply because I think most news outlets are biased in their own way. And I struggle to believe if they actually tell the truth or whether it's a framed version of the truth. Um, and I'm, I know for a fact that a lot of people from my generation are the same. Yeah. And they, that goes for the trust in politics. I know you had... Uh, Theo Blackwell on your episode, yeah. right? He said he speaks exactly that, right? Well, yeah. if deep fakes gets better and better, then what does that say for the trust in politics? Yeah. The same goes for the trust in the news, right? If if deep fakes is already a thing, and especially if it becomes normal, yeah, then what's what's the point? Because for my basic understanding of one of these algorithms, it just means that someone has basically told this robot what to say. And therefore, you have to question, well, did the person telling the robot what to say have an interest in what is being said? Um, and I think we're already at that stage. I mean, I saw some document come out the other day that actually uh, most people of my generation, if they consider something or someone to be true, it's usually podcast hosts. They have the highest trust in podcast hosts, which is good for us, I guess. I but <laughs> but uh, news reporters is like bottom of the barrel already. So... Yeah. Yeah, it scares me these clips that you've got where it, it shows like, you got like Fox News, for example, and then you've got all like the local affiliates yeah. and, they're, and like, they're all saying the exact same thing yeah. line by line and it's just showing like the same story. Yeah. And if you've got a fake narrative and a fake story that you want to embed into, into the, the culture, then using AI is so much easier to do that because you could have millions of fake accounts on X yeah. which are like just people filming themselves as fake selfies talking about a narrative, you know, using the same hashtag yeah. that goes as a, as a campaign. And then who, we won't know what's real anymore. Exactly. And also for all these companies that are investing in AI, right? I wonder if any of them have actually thought about what if this gets used against them? Yeah. Right. Well, you just mentioned Apple is uh, as one of the leading companies in the world. What if someone hates Apple or and that could be a competitor right and it's like you know what we're gonna tank their stock price yeah because we're going to set them up on some sort of international scam that they've been using child labor to produce their phones and whatever it may be and we're gonna expose them using deep fakes right and it's just a bunch of fake videos and that's gonna tank their stock price and that's the end of Apple 
right? And and of course, what we also did, the underlying argument there is also what does that mean for the rest of the world when Apple tanked? I mean, the amount of people that have investment in that yeah. worldwide, including myself. Yeah, uh, and me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? Then uh, entire GDP goes to shit. But the, the, I, don't, I, I wonder whether these companies are actually stopping to ask themselves, what if that happens? Mm. And then, you know, our company ceases to exist because of something we invested in ourselves. Yeah. I just wonder who's who's responsible for all of this and is are they that naive that they're just like let's let's move forward, you know? Let's bring this out into the world.